Welcome to church and welcome to a beautiful, shining, sparkly new day. And guess what? It's a special season because in many places around the world, we will be celebrating our incredible moms. Moms are super awesome. I am thrilled to see you here, especially if it's your first time joining us. Thank you so much for making it a date and for being here. Hello, 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 how are you? Hello, 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 how are you? I'm good. I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm good. I'm great. I'm wonderful. In this series, get ready for some epic Bible stories about extraordinary women that we are calling sheroes. These are women who loved God and with God's help did amazing things that really mattered in their time. If it's your birthday this week, it is time for you to stand up and shout! Let's sing you the birthday song. Happy birthday and a glorious new year ahead. Let's pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to live this day. We pray that you teach us something new today. We pray that this is not our last day. We pray for the celebrants that as they celebrate their new year, they will succeed in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
last month. We had an awesome time last month discovering the names of God in the Bible and what each name means. In week one, we learned that God has over 650 names in the Bible. Wow, that's a lot. His name represents who he is and helps people to remember what he can do. One name of God is Jehovah Nissi, which means the Lord is our banner. He reminds us that God is the one we represent and his power brings us to victory. In week two, we learned about Jehovah Rapha, God's super cool name, which means God who heals. King Hezekiah became very sick 
and he felt sad. So he talked to God and asked him for help. God answered his prayer, showed himself as Yehovah Rapha, and gave him more time to live well and be a good king. In week three, we learned about Jehovah Shalom, which means God is peace. Shalom means to be free from disturbance and to be restful. It also means to be complete, whole, or perfect. When you focus on God and the good things He has done for you, even though you are worried, confused, or even scared, all the stress and worries melt away. And you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can imagine. And finally, last week, we learned that a shepherd takes care of his sheep, guiding and protecting them because they trust him. God is like a shepherd too, called Jehovah Rohai. Jesus showed us that he is a good shepherd by dying for us. When we trust in God, he keeps us safe, loves us, and helps us. We become better followers of Jesus by listening to God, reading the Bible, making good choices, and sharing about God with others. Okay, friends, it's time for me to go, but I'll see you another time. Bye! Thank you, Michelle. That was fabulous. So now, let's get into today's lesson. Our verse of the month is from Proverbs 31 and verse 25. It says, She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. We're going to spend some time to memorize this verse this month and I want us to promise me that by the end of the month, we'll be able to say it with our eyes closed. So one more time, let's do it together. And I'll do it a bit slower so that you can repeat after me. One, two, go. Proverbs 31 and 25, it says, she is clothed with strength and dignity she can laugh at the days to come okay the book of proverbs chapter 31 talks about a woman with a lot of great qualities but two really important ones are strength and dignity these things help her live a life that's uh, meaningful and important and they're super connected Strength isn't just about being strong on the outside, it's also about being tough on the inside. A Proverbs 31 woman is, is strong in all these ways. When tough stuff happens, she stays strong and brave. Plus, she's strong in her faith, leaning on God when she needs help. Now, dignity is another big part of her quality. She acts politely and respectfully and is kind to everyone even when things are hard people look up to her because she's honest and has good values she thinks carefully before she speaks or acts showing how serious she is about living a life that matters a verse from the book of proverbs says that a special woman has strength and dignity that means She's really brave inside and acts with respect and kindness. Because she has these qualities, the verse says she can laugh at the days to come. This means she's not afraid of what's ahead and can face the future with courage. As children of God, we are encouraged to be like this woman. We can ask God to give us strength and dignity so we can be brave and respectful just like her facing whatever comes our way with confidence have you ever had something really cool happen when you least expected it like hmm, like finding your favorite toy just when you thought you lost it well that's kind of like how god works in our lives he 
he puts us exactly where we need to be at just the right time for a good reason. Now, imagine you're playing outside, looking for your lost ball. You search and search and search and search some more, but you can't find it anywhere. Just when you are starting to feel sad, you spot it hiding behind a bush. It's like God led you right to it, right when you needed it the most. Sometimes God helps us in big ways too. Like when you meet a new friend who becomes your best buddy or when you find the perfect book at the library. Just when you were hoping for something fun to read. Those moments are like little surprises from God, showing us that he's always, always looking out for us. For us to understand today's lesson, we need to start at the very beginning of Esther's story. From Esther chapter 1. You see, in the land of Persia, there was a king named Xerxes who ruled over many areas. He threw a big party to show off his riches and power. And all the important people from his kingdom were invited. Now, during the party, the king wanted Queen Vashti to come and show how beautiful she was. <laughs> but she said no. Now, this made the king very angry. And he decided, yes, to find a new queen. A young Jewish girl named Esther, like me, who was raised by her cousin Mordecai, caught the king's eye and was chosen to be the new queen. However, Esther kept her family background a secret, as Mordecai had told her. Meanwhile, Mordecai found out about a plan to hurt the king, and he told Esther, who then told the king and said it was Mordecai who found out. Now this was written down in the king's big book of stories. Later, the king made a man named Haman, very important. But Haman thought he was better than everyone else and wanted everyone to bow down to him. But Mordecai, Esther's cousin, wouldn't bow because he only bows to God. This made Haman very angry and he planned to hurt Mordecai and all the Jewish people, the people of Israel. Haman convinced the king to make a rule to kill all the Jewish people on a certain day. When Mordecai heard about this, he told Esther to go to the king and ask him to help their people. Hmm. Esther was scared because Going to the king without being asked could mean she might die. But Mordecai said, don't you think it is possible that this is exactly the reason why you became queen? Before Queen Esther went to the king, she and the Jewish people fasted and prayed for three days for God's help. On the third day, she courageously went to the king and he welcomed her. The king was happy to see Esther and let her talk by holding out his special stick, showing she could speak. Esther asked the king and Haman to come to a big dinner she had planned. At the dinner, uh, the king asked Esther what she wanted, saying he'd give her almost anything. Esther asked the king and Haman to come to another dinner the next day. After the first dinner, Haman felt proud and important, but he was really angry every time he saw Mordecai. Haman was so angry, right, with Mordecai that he built a tall platform to hang Mordecai on. Later that night, King Xerxes had trouble sleeping. So he asked for someone to read him stories from the king's big book of stories. <laughs> They read about how Mordecai once saved the king's life by telling him about a plan to hurt him. The king realized he never thanked Mordecai for this. And just then, 
Haman came in because he wanted to ask the king <laughs> to permit him to have Mordecai hanged on the tall platform that he had built. But before Haman could speak, the king asked him what he should do for someone he wanted to honor. <laughs> I know. Haman thought the king wanted to honor him. So he suggested a big parade. The king liked the idea and told Haman to do it for Mordecai instead. Ooh, Haman felt very shocked and upset. But he had to do what the king said. So Haman took the king's special clothes and horse and he put the clothes on Mordecai. Then he led Mordecai on the horse through the streets of the city. Haman told everyone, this is what is done for the man who the king wants to honor. After that, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. But Haman quickly went home. With his head covered, he felt embarrassed and ashamed. Now, let's see what happens next in Esther's exciting story. So friends, it's time to take our Bible reading. As always, please get your Bible and open with me. We're reading from the book of Esther chapter 7 verses 1 to 10 and we'll be reading from the International Children's Bible. It says, So the king and Haman went in to eat with Queen Esther. They were drinking wine and the king said to Esther, On this second day also, what are you asking for? I will give it to you. What is it you want? I will give you as much as half of my kingdom. Then Queen Esther answered, My king, I hope you are pleased with me. If it pleases you, let me leave. This is what I ask. And let my people leave too. This is what I want. I ask this because my people and I have been sold to be destroyed. We are to be killed and completely wiped out. If we had been sold as female and male slaves, I would have kept quiet. That would not be enough of a problem to bother the king. Then King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, Who is he? Where is he? And who has done such a thing? Esther said, A man who is against us. Our enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was filled with terror before the king and the queen. The king was very angry. He got up, left his wine, and went out into the palace garden. But Haman stayed inside to beg Queen Esther to save his life. He could see that the king had already decided to kill him. The king came back from the palace garden to the banquet hall, and he saw Haman falling on the couch where Esther was lying. The king said, Will he even attack the queen while I'm in the house? As soon as the king said that, the servants came and covered Haman's face. Her brother was one of the eunuchs there serving the king. He said, Look, a platform for hanging people stands near Haman's house. It is 75 feet high. This is the one Haman had prepared for Mordecai, who gave the warning that saved the king. The king said, Hang Haman on it. So they hanged Haman on the platform he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king was not so angry anymore. In this part of the story, Queen Esther, along with King Xerxes and Haman, is having a meal together. This is the second dinner that Esther had asked the king and Haman to come to the next day. The king asks Esther again what she wants, promising to give her anything even up to half of this kingdom. Esther takes this chance to beg for her life and the lives of her people, the Jews. She explains to the king that they have been sold to be destroyed and if they were only sold as slaves, she wouldn't have bothered him. When the king asks who is responsible for this, Esther points out Haman as their enemy. Haman becomes terrified because he realizes the king is angry with him. The king leaves the room in anger and goes to the palace garden. Why Haman stays behind to beg Queen Esther for his life? However, 
when the king returns and sees Haman near Esther, he becomes even angrier. One of the king's servants, Habana, tells the king about a tall platform that Haman built to hang Mordecai who had saved the king's life. The king orders Haman to be hanged on that very platform. So, <laughs> Haman is punished by being hanged on the same structure he had prepared for Mordecai. After this, the king's anger lessens. Now, let's see how this amazing story of courage applies to us today. Esther's story teaches us about the importance of being in the right place at the right time. Let's learn some important lessons together. It's God's timing, not luck. God caused Esther to become queen just at the right time. Imagine you're playing a game with your friend and you win. Instead of just thinking you're lucky, remember that God gives us opportunities. Maybe you're good at drawing or playing soccer. Use those talents to make others happy and help them. God's timing isn't always easy. Think about a time when you had to do something hard. Hmm. Like sharing your favorite toy with your brother or sister. Esther had to do something even harder. Risk her life to save her people. Sometimes doing the right thing means being brave even when it's scary or difficult. Like telling the truth even though you might get punished. God can walk through anyone. Have you ever helped a friend with their homework or shared your snack with someone who forgot theirs? Just like that, God can use us to help others. If we don't do it, someone else might. So let's always be ready to help when God gives us a chance. In conclusion, being at the right place at the right time is truly a special gift from God. Just like finding your missing toy exactly when you need it brings happiness, God arranges things in our lives to put us where we should be. Esther's story shows this beautifully, showing how God's plan and timing are at work in every circumstance. Whether it's Queen Esther bravely risking her life to help her people, or the surprising twist that led to Haman's downfall, we see God's hand guiding every step. Let's follow Esther's lead by trusting in God's plan, using our skills to make a positive difference and being ready to help others. Even when we face challenges, we can pray like Esther did, asking God for courage and direction. Remember, God can walk through anyone to accomplish incredible things, reminding us that we're where we are for a reason and with his help, we can face life's adventures with faith and courage. So this week, we've learned that God's timing is perfect and he puts us in the right place at the right time for a reason. Just like Esther became queen at the perfect time, we can trust that God has a plan for us too. Esther's bravery teaches us to be courageous even in difficult situations, inspiring us to face challenges with bravery. Esther's story also encourages us to use our abilities to help others, showing that God can walk through anyone to make a difference. And lastly, we're reminded to trust in God's plan for our lives, pray for guidance, and have faith that he will lead us to the right direction. It's time for the challenge of the week. This week, let's spread kindness like sunshine. Your challenge is to do something kind every day. You could share your toys, lend a helping hand with chores, or say something nice to make someone smile. Let's just 
pray. Dear God, thank you for teaching us that you place us in the right place at the right time for a reason. Help us trust that you will always lead us in the right direction. In Jesus' name, amen. Some people have written us to say that these teachings bless them and would like to give an offering to God. The different ways by which you can give are now displayed. God bless you. out our pop quiz today. Ready, set, go! God can walk through anyone to accomplish dash things. A. Incredible. B. Bad. C. Funny. D. Silly. The answer is A. Incredible. Esther was a queen in the story. True or false? True. Why did Esther fast and pray before speaking to the king? A. To play games. B. To ask for courage. C. To watch cartoons. D to give up. The answer is B to ask for courage. Esther asked the king for a new dress during the first dinner. True or false? answer is false. Esther asked the king and Haman to come to another dinner the next day. When we are at the right place at the right time, it's because we are lucky. True or false? The answer is false. Being at the right place at the right time is not luck but a special gift from God. Why did Mordecai refuse to bow down to Haman? A. He was shy. B. He didn't see him. C. He was ill. D. He only bows to God. The answer is D. He only bows to God. Esther asked the king to help her dash. A. Find her cats. B. Save her people. C. Bake cookies. D. Wash her clothes. The answer is B. Save her people. The king was very angry when he found out about Haman's plan. True or false? The answer is true. What punishment did the king order for Haman? A. To go on holiday. B. To go to jail. C. To be hanged. D. To be rewarded. The answer is C. To be hanged. What is our memory verse for this month?
Our verse of the month is from Proverbs 31 and verse 25. It says, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Remember that you can watch all these teachings over and over again. Till I see you again soon, remember to trust in God's plans for your life. Pray for guidance and have faith that he will lead you in the right direction. I love you and God loves you more.